Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Alana and in this video, well in this channel in which we review books, we're going to be reviewing another book, American Ending, the newly released American Ending. Why am I holding it like this? <laughs> ah, it's time for lunch. American Ending, I hope I don't butcher her last name, Mary Kay Zorovlev. I think I'm right. So this book was actually sent to me. It was published June 6th of this year, 2023, in case you're watching it in the future, as in 2024 and beyond. Um, this book was sent to me by the publisher on behalf of a publishing company. So K Publicity reached out to me and was like, my girl Haley, man, she knows how to pick them for me. Every now, every, I say at least once a year, Haley will reach out to me like, yo, I got this book. Like, I think that you are going to really enjoy this. Do you want it? And I looked at it and I was like, absolutely. Because whenever Haley picks a book for me, I, whatever book Haley has picked for me thus far, I have liked it. So I trust her judgment. And so then I got this book from Blair Publishing, who is the publisher, obviously. So this is a newly released book. Not too many reviews on it on, on YouTube. No, sorry, on Instagram yet. I don't think there's a YouTube review for it yet but fresh off the presses i think that this is a book that many people will enjoy um and it's it's reminiscent of some what are considered now classic american contemporary pieces and or like uh contempt uh they're classics but maybe they're more modern classics and i'm going to get into that at the end so let's jump right into this because i think that this is a book that i think should be on a bestsellers list. But what do I know? She asked, Russian ending or American ending? So an American ending, Yelena is the first person in her Russian Orthodox family, who are they also called old believers, to be born in America. Her parents have immigrated from Russia to a mining Appalachian town in Pennsylvania in the late 1890s. So Yelena was born in the United States and you assume that her mother was pregnant when she was either came to Pennsylvania or where they got to, sorry, when they got to Pennsylvania or she was conceived very shortly after. Now, there they left, when her parents left Russia, they left two daughters in Russia um, in order to, you know, be able to get the funds and the, and the, and the circumstances to bring them over. So Yelena is the only, when she's born, her sisters are still in Russia. So she is the first child to be born in the United States from this, of this family. Now this mining town is a very diverse immigrant area and mothers tend to stay at home. You can imagine it's the 1890s, early 1900s. The mothers tend to stay at home and tend to the family and the domestic needs, while the fathers and the sons, once the sons are old enough, sometimes not old enough, working or work, they, they're working in the dangerous mines, coal mines. Daughters often, the daughters are often pulled out of school early to assist with the family, household needs, and marry early. I mean early, like 13, 14. Um, however, Yelena is determined to create a different life for herself. However, breaking away from such a complex uh, cultural and, and rich culture, cultural and religious identity that she has is a difficult decision to make. She not, well, let, me, let me be clear. She's not trying to fully break away. This is a family rooted and this is a culture rooted in really intense cultural and religious traditions, but Yelena is still trying to build, break away and create a life that is, that offers more choices. And that is a difficult decision to make. And there are challenging realities that come into play just through life that make that decision to try to break away or break away a little bit. It's not a full break, but just to try to ease up on some of that old school tradition that Yelena grew up with. Um, it's easier said than done. So yeah, let's dive in. American Ending is a rich portrait of the rich diversity 
in this area, especially. So the book does start in late 19, 1890s, but it, it mainly takes place in the 1810s. Excuse me. The Spanish flu um, does make an appearance in this book. World War One, so that's the time period that we're dealing with. Yelena is not so. Yelena is not actually only surrounded by just Russians. She is, um, yes, many of the people in this book that she interacts with are Russians from her own parents' area in Russia. So, but she's constantly interacting with other groups: African Americans, Italians, the Irish. Um, this is a completely normal existence for her in her community. She, it's really interesting because this is the early 1910s in America, in Pennsylvania. And so, but Yelena, this is way before the civil rights movement, decades before the civil rights movement. But Yelena lives in a, a community where when they go to school, her classroom is integrated with by its boys and girls in all the neighborhood kids are in this class. So she went to school with sitting across from another Russian young girl or boy, an Italian, an African-American, an Irish. The teacher is Irish. Very diverse. The author, Zurablev, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, writes this conglomeration of cultures and religions in a very endearing way. I chuckled a few times. There's some really good, like, healthy rivalry between some of especially the religious groups the catholics and the russian orthodox <laughs> so good um the food i found myself getting hungry during this book all oh, the food that's des described man the mm, if you're a foodie read this book <laughs> so here's a here's a here's a quote ma and pa had traveled wagons boats to live in a house attached to people from where they left it was a loop like in a Russian fairy tale. And there were other loops I returned to, raveling and unraveling the knotted yarns. They had come here so I could come here. They, they had come here so I could come here so I could be American. Our family was more American than Russian, but now more Russians were coming. So it's like when you live in an area that is very where a lot of immigrants are settling. It's like you left your place to live in little Russia. <laughs> you left Russia to live in little Russia. You left Italy to live in little Italy. Same now, like if you go to certain parts of New York City, it's still dominated. Certain boroughs or certain certain neighborhoods within certain boroughs are still dominated by certain whoever settled there. Same with DC, same with any major city. And I think across the board, like you could go to, I'm not sure, well, I'll say for the United States. I'm pretty sure this happens in Europe also. But um, Chinatown. There's a Chinatown in D.C. There's a Chinatown in New York. There are other Chinatowns. Yeah, I mean, okay. Have you been to Staten Island? It's a little lively. Good pizza. <laughs> so this is the quote that made me laugh. With all of, So this is the quote that made me laugh because, again, you have these religions that are... Uh, you have these characters that are saying your culture does it wrong, but it's all in good fun. Then I called Chins a blockhead, which I'd pay for. And Maria told Angelo he had noodles for brains. Oh yeah, Angelo said, you people cross yourself wrong. So obviously Angelo, Angelo is Italian, but he's talking to his Russian Orthodox peers saying that they cross themselves wrong. One group crosses themselves right to left the other group crosses themselves left to right because obviously angelo is italian he is catholic i just thought that was funny it's all in good humor and and these little quips that these characters have and it's just good fun they're also there's a christmas scene in here earlier on in the book where yelena's family opens up their doors and then her irish teacher comes and it's just it's good it's good stuff American Ending is written in Yelena's first-person narrative, and so we do get a lot of her questioning internally her family's traditions. But what I like about American Ending is that Yelena doesn't always view these traditions as a bad thing. There are times when the author is showing that having a close-knit community with long-held traditions has its, and, and familiarity has its perks. That was a fruit fly. It's just that time of the year. Like, you, fruit flies. Where do they come from? <laughs> and 
And also because it's summer, the best fruits, this is nothing to do. This book makes me hungry. There is, you know, it's just that time of the year. So also there, some of my, my favorite fruits are in season. Pineapples. I just picked up a bag of nectarines. They're so good. But when you bring in fresh fruit, man, you bring in the fruit flies. As I got my bait out for them. Anyway, let, let's focus. I'm hungry. Ah, so yes, there are times. So it, all she, you know, it's not always a bad thing. This this tradition is not always a bad thing. Having a close family in a unit is not a, always. It it has its perks, and so it is a source. Oftentimes we see that though Yolanda is questioning things, she really wants to live in an environment where she can make her own decisions and not just be bound by just oh I have to be a domestic. I have to do this. Yelena loves to learn. She loves school. But when times get hard, those traditions, that tight that tight-knit family group is a source of comfort when life gets really, really challenging. In Sunday school, I tried to make sense of the church. Father Dimitri said the church doesn't answer to us, we answer to the church. What I wanted to know was how did a Polish girl get the nerve to join other girls and demand anything. My country, church, and family, my personal trinity, had always been thorn as well as balm, as capable of showing malice as mercy. And I like that the author did this. It's not just a bashing of, because this is written in the 21st century, I think it would be easy for any other author to, also the author is um, her family. She's a, she's a descendant of Russian immigrants who were of the old believer of faith. So she's paying homage to her own um, background. But it would be so easy in the 21st century to throw shade at old traditions and religion and whatever. But she doesn't do that. Yes, there's a critique here or there, but it's so, it's done in a way that's very respectful. And you, you understand why in the context, Yelena wants a change in certain ways. But it's still very respectful. So Yelena has a book of Russian fairy tales. And if you remember the quote that I used in the beginning, it's called Russian ending or American ending. And then early on in the book, I mean, within the first 10 chapters, I'm sorry, the first 10 pages, that Yelena talks about the difference between how Russian fairy tales end, they tend to end a lot more brutal, than how American fairy tales end. There's a lot more optimism, hope. There is, so hence, oops, hence the book being called American Ending. She's already, the author's already giving you that little sneak peek, that little oomph of, you're going to expect an American ending, not a Russian ending. <laughs> but that, does, that doesn't mean that there is no trouble in this book. So Yelena has a book of Russian fairy tales. And throughout the novel, she's referencing very various tales and, par and parallels are drawn between these fairy tales and what Yelena and her family are experiencing. And of course, real life is going to be a lot rougher around the edges than a fairy tale. She didn't belong here, here married to Stump and a mother at 14. From princess to peasant, her life was a fairy tale in reverse. In a lot of ways, Yelena can be seen as a Cinderella-esque type character. Out of all of her siblings, even when her sisters finally come over from Russia, who are older than her um, and grew up very differently than how Yelena grew up in America, than how they grew up in Russia, Yelena also has a younger brother and a younger sister and then another younger brother. Like Her parents got a lot of kids. Um, so Yelena's really in the middle. She's the middle child. So she, the most of the, a lot of responsibility is placed on her that are not placed on her older siblings. Yelena is the most mature out of all of her siblings. Um, and her parents recognize that her sisters reckon her older sisters recognize that. And in a way, a lot of ways Yelena is taking advantage of because she is the most reliable. She knows how to cook, clean, mend, read everything. Like Yelena is the one that people put the most burden on in her family. I blame that on Ma and my sisters, making me their surf. My sisters arrived in America, and I imagined that I was the girl in the golden slipper story whose mother loved her daughters more. Years later, I realized it ended with the neglected daughter rising to the top like cream. 
Finally, again, like I said earlier, Yelena is determined to make a different life for herself in which she's able to make more decisions and more choices and have more choices for herself. She has this inner determination and this inner fire that allows her to think beyond her circumstances. So the women's suffrage uh, fight is going on towards the end of this book. And Yelena is following this story as a 17, 18 year old. And um, really funny past, actually really funny quote from Yelena's mother about suffering. What she, she, she thinks suffrage means suffering, she, but her mother can't read English. She's like, what's she suffering? Yelena, read. Like I can hear the, I can hear her mother in my ear. It's too funny. But so, but her family doesn't understand. Like why, why do women need to, like her family don't get the importance of women asking for the vote. But Yelena gets it and she's following the story and she's determined, no, this needs to happen. You know, Yelena is looking into the future. Our kind of Russian Orthodox is called old believers because they don't believe in making changes or choices, but I aim to choose some things for myself. That might be who can get out, those who aren't beaten down, singled out. I really enjoy American Ending. It is well written, dryly funny. And even though there are some tough events that occur and sad moments that occur in this story, we're dealing with the mining town, so you can't have a story about with miners and mining in it without a mining accident, at least one. Um, and I don't consider that a spoiler. I think I knew that was going to happen before I even opened the book. If I know this is taking place in a mining town with, you know, with, with an active mine, mm, it's almost a given plot point. There's the Spanish flu and um, just the normal hardships of life during this period. Also, this is a book about immigrants and the, and the immigrant the immigrant story in America at this time. Um, and so you can imagine that life is not always easy for these people because they're immigrants. And this question of citizenship, what does it mean to be a citizen? What does it mean to be an immigrant? Even during this time, Yelena was born in the United States, but her, her citizenship status at one point gets questioned by the government. So um, yes, so it's just a snapshot of what it means to be an immigrant, um, especially during this time period. And if, I'm pretty sure that people could draw parallels between now and then, but this this is definitely its own space and time, I would argue. All of that to say, there is something that feels optimistic about it, about this book, hence American Ending. The title is strategically taken. It's American Ending, not Russian Ending. This book is not heavy and oppressive. I really like L L uh, Yelena as a character. She's very endearing. She's she's pretty funny. Also, like 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 I said, the food. <sighs> the food, kielbasa, potatoes, sour cream, pickled everything. I love anything pickled. The prosciutto because it, there's a lot of Italians in this book. Uh, prosciutto is like my favorite cured meat. The amount of prosciutto that I consume is probably appalling, but I have no regrets. Um, this, I work out so I can eat out. Calories in, calories out. I like to eat. Um, this book made me crave some foods. So yes, um, because of this book today, on the day that I record this, I've been craving Polish stuffed cabbage. I gotta make some. I'm making Polish stuffed cabbage tonight for dinner that I'm gonna be eating off for the rest of the week because it makes a big batch. I, have, I don't care. Ooh, with the tomato sauce, you know what I'm saying? Put on some mashed potatoes. Whew. I do have some Jewish ancestry on one side of my family. It's not even really that distant. <laughs> and um, um, slash Eastern European. Sometimes those cravings just hit. They hit. Whew, and it's hitting. Like I, I need, I need the stuffed cabbage. <laughs> so yes, this book will make you hungry. And I think if you are Russian, Polish, Jewish in some cases, this book may feel nostalgic for you, depending on how far removed or how close you are to your parents immigrating or you immigrating, um, if you immigrated from that part of the world. Or even if you were born and raised in, a, say you were born and raised in this country, but your family still traditionally has held on to certain things and especially certain foods, this book is going to feel familiar, just from the food. <laughs> um, so yes, making Polish stuffed cabbage tonight, because this book made me hungry. There 
is something about American ending that reminded me of both Demon Copperhead and A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, two of my favorite books currently of all time. Demon Copperhead is one of my favorite contemporary novels. Um, so I am not surprised that Demon Copperhead has won two awards thus far. I called it last year when I read it. I said, this book's winning something. And Amer A Tree Grows in Brooklyn is also one of my favorite classics. And so if you're a fan of either or both, I think you'd like those books. I say Demon Copperhead because of the mining background. So Demon Copperhead takes place in a mining town, Appalachian mining town, after these mines have been shut down and just how shutting down those mines decimated a culture, but it's still part of their culture, if that makes sense. So um, it's almost like seeing the aftermath of what happens and what happened in a lot of these Appalachian mining towns. I also say because, well, let me get to this. Also, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, because it's A Tree Girl Grows in Brooklyn is actually set in the same time period as American Ending. Just one is taking place in New York City and the other is taking place in Pennsylvania. So it's almost like you can read them as parallel stories of each other. And also, both of the main characters in those books are, are bookish and they love learning. And they love stories. Zero of Love also nailed that quintessential American youth tone. Um, and so I'm going to go and call it, I think I would consider American ending a modern American classic because it's just a snapshot of a certain place in time with a really, really good character, main character, um, focusing on pre predominantly Russian immigrants, old believers, and it's got that American tone. It's so good. Highly recommend it. I gave it a four out of five. And I think that if I got distracted, I think that again, if you liked Demon Copperhead, even books like Catcher in the Rye, which you know I'm not a fan of, but you know, that type of tone, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, this is going to be right up your street. Especially if you have a background like uh, Yelena, an, eth an ethnic cultural background like Yelena, I think also this book is going to feel nostalgic for you. So, ah, American Ending it was published this year, June 6, 2023. If this sounds like your cup of tea, go ahead on and pick it up. Go ahead on and go ahead on and grab it. It was a good read, and I can't wait to. I look forward to rereading it one day. And it made me want to revisit A Tree Goes in Brooklyn. I'm due for an over. Uh, a I'm overdue for a reread. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Also, feel free to follow me on Instagram, where I get up to more book shenanigans. All of my book content goes there first. That's where I also post my, uh, what do you call it? Ah, monthly TBRs and reading wrap ups for each month and funny memes because that's what the internet is for. So I'm going to sign out, sign off English and see you in the next one.